Andrea Montes from the Spanish National Center for Metallurgical Research, um, speaking on the intriguingly vague topic of steel composites for energy. So thank you very much for the introduction. So the work I'm about to present is on experimental results. So we're moving to uh, microstructural characterization then. And uh, on some uh, alloy, iron, chromium, aluminum, titanium, steel, uh, which is reinforced with ceramic particles. So this uh, work is, uh, f well, first of all, I would like to acknowledge uh, my co-workers from the National Center of Metallurgical Research in Spain also the research environmental and uh, energy research uh, center and the national center for Mi electronic microscopy and the Oak Ridge national lab so let's uh, move on the uh, the background as professor ave pointed out this morning uh, there is a uh, the reduction in co2 emissions and the uh, increase in the quantity of electricity that we need uh, to produce there are the two subjects which is um, the driving force for development of new power generation systems. But even in these new power generation systems, uh, in order to uh, gain in efficiency, we need to push forward the uh, temperature, uh, the steam temperature and the pressures. So that means we need always to improve the high temperature uh, properties of the heat resistant alloys or develop a new ones. I am focusing here on iron based alloys. So uh, there are several ways to increase the um, grip resistant of those alloys. Uh, just uh, summarizing three of them, uh, one method could be uh, the, uh, the combination of the composition adjustments uh, with uh, computational thermodynamics and uh, the thermomechanical control process optimization uh, to uh, create new microstructures. The second method is to strengthen the steel by dispersion of ceramic particles, oxide particles, which is the, uh, this line leads to the ferritic ODS, oxide dispersion strength alloy, which is one of those I am going to present. And uh, this, uh, the, the, um, is everybody knows the advantage of ODS alloy at high temperatures, but um, the subject I am going to present is how is, uh, mm, why is the reason why these alloys have such bad properties at low temperatures. Um, the third method will consist in the uh, compositional tuning uh, to induce the formation of the nanocluster and nanophase. This line uh, could be lead to the formation of the new developed or NFA alloys or nano feature alloys, uh, for, uh, which have very uh, promising application, especially in the nuclear uh, uh, power plants. So, more focusing on the uh, type of alloy I'm going to present here, this. Um, is, uh, this alloy has very promising properties when you are uh, dealing with uh, uh, corrosion resistant plus uh, creep uh, resistant at high temperatures. So one of the uh, applications that uh, this alloy is used for, it could be in the development of the um, accelerator driving system nuclear reactors. Uh, for those which are not familiar with this type of uh, prototype, or, um, this uh, I would just uh, so uh, say a few words about to put in the subcritical fuel uh, surrounded by a, a liquid uh, or um, nuclear spallation uh, material, which is a lead bismuth eutectoic liquid uh, at around 500 degrees C. So, uh, but uh, to uh, work with the nuclear reaction, we have to put uh, pumping in some neutrons uh, or proton uh, through a proton beam uh, go to the spallation uh, uh, material. So the um, hot topic of them, the hard issue is which should be built this uh, beam window inside the nuclear reactor, which material we uh, have to use to, uh, uh, to build this window. So then the, uh, these uh, ODS alloys were uh, the first option because of the experience and the high uh, temperature properties. However, uh, this uh, material also have to work uh, okay at temperatures around 500 degrees C. Uh, at these uh, temperatures, everybody knows uh, that there is some uh, problems with the embridement due to the uh, formation of a chromium-rich phase, the alpha prima, which is affecting the properties. 
So this is mainly the characterization I am going to present of those uh, properties. So several topics uh, that I will uh, summarize here, how determining the activation energy of this, uh, this process that uh, also will present for the first time. So a nanophase formation of uh, we call beta prima uh, that we detect during, uh, in the, during annealing of those uh, alloys and the effect of elastic stress on how this uh, nanophase uh, precipitation uh, process is, is going. So very briefly, this is the composition of the alloy and this is uh, the uh, processing route is a, a classical mechanical layering process followed by hot rolling and core rolling uh, uh, still. So the microstructure that we obtain after this uh, processing is presented here. So it's a strongly textured mic uh, microstructure with elongated grains around the rolling direction with its own fairly homogeneous distribution of particles inside, uh, highly dislocated and uh, with uh, a lot of uh, low angle boundaries inside. But when we are closing uh, to the uh, type of uh, oxides we find out in after the cold rolling process, we see that there is a different type of oxides that we introduce during the mechanical alloying. So we detect uh, yttrium aluminium garnets instead of the yttrium oxide that we introduce as uh, reinforcement. So that's indicated in some part of the, processing of the processing of the materials, the oxides become dissolved and then uh, form another type of uh, oxides. So um, this is important, I would like to highlight that because maybe it's opened the window for the development of the NFA alloys because there are some kind of control in this type of oxides that you can form. So it's not necessary to introduce the oxide as, a, uh, as, as it is but you can control the composition in order to promote the formation of the oxides during the processing. Um, when we uh, monitorize how it's going, the harness, uh, well, first of all, the heat treatment that we tested was between the 500 degrees C and 400 degrees C. So I put here with a very big uh, dot, uh, which are uh, the two heat treatment, most of the results I am going to present. But uh, just uh, to say that these are in the inside the miscibility gap, but outside the spinodal decomposition region in the iron chromium system. Um, when uh, the, uh, as I was saying, so when we monitorize how is the hardening evolution during the heat treatment, we saw, as expected, that a steady state increase for 175 degrees C, but there is suddenly an increase in hardness, so uh, for 435, which leads us to, uh, to think about that there will be a new uh, or secondary precipitation process. Um, the tools I am going to use is the uh, um, atom proof tomography and basically the two of the um, tools uh, from atom proof which is the chromonat or the atom maps which is presented here when each dot and the reconstruction of the sample uh, will correspond to an atom here is presented the chromium atom so the dark areas uh, will be uh, the alpha prima and then the matrix alpha phase. So also isoconcentration surface, more particularly the, uh, the mm, results I am going to present is 30% chromium isoconcentration surface, which indicate in the feature here that uh, in the surface you have 30% concentration in chromium, but if you're increasing the content of chromium as uh, long as you are going inside those uh, particles. I take also advantage of this figure to, in, uh, if uh, we plot a 5% titanium isoconcentration surface, that we have a, a, par a titanium rich particle very close related with the alpha prima particle. Going through the atom maps, and sorry because there is no scale here, but from here to here is 20 nanometers, you can appreciate how, is, how fine is the, uh, this uh, alpha prima process, which is coarsening as long as you are increasing the time. But also you can uh, see how is the partition of the elements, chromium, aluminium, and titanium, in this uh, processing. And you have uh, here aluminium and titanium closely related, as you can see here, which is uh, the uh, beta prima phase, and I presented previously, and uh, how this beta prima is depleting chromium, and by the other hand, the alpha prima is depleting aluminium and, uh, in, and titanium, which is barely, you can see uh, here. But if we want to be sure more uh, precisely which is the concentration of those particles, so we can go through the proximity histogram analysis, which is a, a statistical tool analyzing from the atom, uh, atom proof results 
and then you take all the particles uh, as an overall, and then you analyze the, compo the composition evolution with time from uh, all the particles you have in the uh, atom in the isoconcentration surface representation. And find, uh, just to, uh, to um, highlight here that there is a, a chromium increase uh, when you are increasing the time in the, in the alpha prima particle, but there is also depletion in aluminum and uh, titanium. From the isoconcentration uh, surface evolution with time, I just to uh, highlight how it's becoming more refined uh, when you are decreasing the temperature. So at high temperature, you have isolated particles, relatively coarse particles. But when you are decreasing temperature, those particles are become finer and also are becoming more percolated. So that means uh, that uh, the microstructure, uh, that kinetics of the precipitation is going to change. As you can see uh, here uh, from the uh, variation of the chromium uh, amplitude with uh, annealing time. So you can see that the fastest kinetic we can get is a 475, but this is decreasing the uh, kinetics for uh, when you are increasing the, uh, the time. But if we want to go to exactly the uh, coarsening rate, we need to go through the uh, minimum radius of the particle. So then we use the autocorrelation function analysis and if we plot uh, the results for the different uh, uh, temperature, we see that there is a uh, following the 10 to the 1 third, which is the traditional uh, uh, LSW theory for coarsening. But regarding the activation energy, we need to go to another technique. So the, we go to the thermoelectrical power measurement, which is basically based on the Seebeck effect. When you place a, oops, a metallic sample here, between two blocks with a different uh, with a temperature gradient that will be appear at a voltage difference. So this magnitude is we call TIP, and this is sensitive to the uh, the, the things that are occurring during an annealing. So if we plot this um, uh, uh, we plot this TIP results uh, according with an austin ricket type equation, when we have a, a, a Renius type uh, temperature dependent uh, term here and we plot uh, this, uh, the, dif the result we obtain at different temperatures, we came out with an activation energy which is pretty close to the cell diffusion of chromium in iron, which is basically saying that the process is the cell diffusion of chromium in iron. Uh, regarding the, um, the beta prima phase that I present roughly before, so uh, going through the proximity histogram analysis, we see uh, that this um, beta prima is formed where the um, titanium content is, pr is present. I mean, the, f the initiation of the, uh, uh, of, the, um, of the process is the uh, titanium um, concentration uh, in the microstructure. So um, going through the uh, comp uh, composition profile from the beta prima phase, uh, there is, uh, we, can, uh, we uh, could came out with uh, an equation for the uh, stoichiometry of those particles. So it's basically an F2 aluminum titanium where titanium is uh, uh, served with uh, some uh, chromium in the microstructure. And going to th uh, TIM, uh, TEM, um, we uh, observe that high coherency with the matrix of those uh, particles. Uh, we have, uh, the, in, th in this uh, micro graph, we observe that the 1, 1, 0 plane from the matrix is coincides with the 2, 2, uh, 0 plane from the uh, alpha, uh, or the beta prima particle. And from the FFTA uh, image from the uh, TM uh, picture, we came out with an, uh, crystal structure which coincides with the TO3 uh, structure with a lattice parameter of 0.58. So this is consistent with the phase, uh, phase diagram. This is, would be the concentrations we detect on the uh, beta uh, prima particle. So with this, we uh, determine which is the cell structure plus the uh, composition. And uh, uh, finally, just going through the how is the elastic stress affecting this process of alpha prima precipitation and beta prima precipitation, we can observe that uh, mm, there is no uh, any change that we can detect under uh, when the uh, annealing process takes under elastic stress or not on the B alpha prime and uh, alpha precipitation as we as we can observe uh, here. But when we are going to the beta prima, there is a significant effect of the uh, elastic stress when you are proceeding with the annealing under the elastic stress. So this. Uh, uh, well, I, s I forget to say that the tests were performed on all point f between 0.5 and 0.8, the GL stress of the material at that temperature. Um, 
how, uh, we also detect how is coarsening those particles, which uh, in uh, the radius of those particles are uh, becoming bigger when you are proceeding with the annealing under elastic stress. But there is no change on the, uh, or no significant change on the number density of those particles in the material. So this could be uh, explained in terms of how the elastic stress can drive in the diffusion of titanium in the material. And this is especially uh, important when you observe the grain boundaries of the, uh, that you have in your material after the heat treatment under elastic stress. So you can see that there is a significant uh, um, enrichment in titanium on the grain boundaries. And this content titanium concentration will lead to the formation of precipitates on the grain boundary, which is never good in terms of properties. Uh, but to be sure what, what, uh, what we have on the grain boundaries, we will go to the uh, STEM analysis and we will analyze a high angle grain boundary and also a low angle grain boundary in this uh, type of materials. So when we uh, um, go to the maps that we obtain with EDX in these um, uh, high angle grain boundaries, we can figure out that is again the titanium segregation on the high angle grain boundaries but also chromium uh, segregation. So there is uh, some correlations between the aluminum and titanium, uh, and yttrium, sorry, uh, for the uh, type of oxides we have, but there is another ones which are more pure yttria than the, uh, uh, the aluminum, uh, the yttrium aluminum gartnet we detected. <coughs> Regarding the uh, low angle boundaries, however, that we cannot expect a heavy segregation, we uh, detect some segregation in titanium and also some segregation in chromium. So this um, probably are due to the, uh, so this um, concentration in titanium could be um, interesting in terms of how it's evolving the uh, microstructure during recrystallization and how are moving those uh, low angle grain boundaries during the uh, high temperature uh, heat treatments. And with all of these results, that's only to go to the conclusion. So uh, just to say that the, uh, basically, uh, we, uh, for the first time, we determined the existence in this type of alloys of a kind of intermetallic, so the beta prima phase. And uh, we um, analyzed with atom probe all the process of the uh, phase separation of alpha alpha prima, but also with uh, TEM detect what uh, the crystal structure of this beta prima. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Carlos, for that. I thought that was fascinating with all the segregation going on. Not something I would have expected. Um, all right. Uh, yes, we already have one question. Mm -hmm. oh my goodness. So uh, I think uh, uh, in your specimen, many uh, particles, oxides and uh, alpha prime, beta prime. Uh -huh. So my question is, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, more effective, oxides or alpha prime, or beta prime? Uh, if we are talking about a high temperature, <laughs> oxides are uh, more effective than the uh, beta prima for controlling creep. But the problem is how the embliment at low temperature, I mean temperature ranging between 500 and 700 degrees C, the, when the beta prima uh, phase is stable, and how it's affecting the properties. We are uh, going through toughness uh, analysis and also from creep at low temperatures on those uh, samples. And then the results are very bad in terms of uh, creep, uh, creep resistance, but also in toughness. And uh, we observe in the fracture uh, analysis the presence of those beta prima particles. So mm -hmm. we need still ODS. Yes. Uh, we need uh, a steel of the S uh, was designed, especially this one, uh, with aluminum, because you want to combine corrosion resistance plus uh, creep strength. Uh, because of the application you are looking for. The problem is this uh, steel was designed for other type of applications where it's always working at high temperatures, when the toughness and the, some of the uh, properties are not very, a big issue. Uh, but when you are working at low temperatures, because this uh, steel also has to be good at low temperatures, all of these problems uh, came along. So is that the type of uh, work? Yeah. Okay, we have uh, Carlo, uh, thank you for your excellent talk with the atom probe result. And uh, in fact, we've, we have studied uh, spinoid structure before. And I just wonder uh, whether you have observed your result from TEM. 
in your example, you show it's quite clear. We mm -hmm. can see the spinotal structure at lower temperature. Uh, you can have a small, you can have a small, uh, small particle. And yeah. at higher temperature, we, you can have a large particle. And I just wonder, because by using TEM, it's quite easy to check the structure. But uh, mm. I just wonder uh, whether you, can, you, you have studied mm. this, uh, this okay. kind of structure in TEM before? And, uh, uh, the mm, picture I saw, uh, which is, uh, well, this one, I guess you are uh, referring, is uh, the beta prima phase. I mean, this is an uh, intermetallic particle, so it's not the alpha prima, which is uh, coming from the spinoidal uh, decomposition. We couldn't get an uh, image. Uh, we are not uh, skilled enough to get image on the alpha prima with TEM. Uh, but with this uh, particle, even if there is very fine particles, I mean, in talking about three or four nanometers uh, in diameter, so maybe you can detect it. In but this is a beta prime structure. Uh, hmm. In fact, I would like to study alpha and alpha prime in TEM. And uh -huh. It's quite easy to, to observe the structure because it's one is uh, ion, ion rich and the, the other one is chromium rich. Yeah. And, uh, well, the, the people who, um, I, I know people in Oakridge where they used to, uh, use, uh, to work with TEM in this type of a structure, they were using the, the, like a low energy TEM analysis, so uh, to maybe you can uh, detect which um, uh, type of particle you have because of that you are basically mapping the iron content you have. So when you decrease the iron uh, content in, the, in your, your mapping, so then maybe will correspond to the alpha prima particle. And then you can focus then and do it at high resolution. So that is the, but we did end up. So and also, we can see this okay structure in the uh, stepping order structure. Okay. And have you observed this uh, structure before? No. No, okay. No, thank you. Yep. Hello, you said, uh, thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. So you said from the very beginning that uh, one of the motivation is uh, uh, the increased temperature and steam pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, can you clarify what are the target pressures uh, which are of interest? Are they in bars, kilobars, or? Five? Well, um, uh, the, when we start to work with these materials with Harry, um, 10 years ago, more time, the, the target was around 15 bars at 1,200 degrees C. Okay. Mm. Thank you. So uh, very low still. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Okay. Martin, you had a question. Yep. Uh, on your last slide, you were looking at segregation under elastic stress. Yes. Um, do you have a relationship between elastic stress and the degree of segregation no. of these elements? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, we do are you have any that. suggestion as to why <laughs> elastic stress might be driving these elements? Is it equilibrium or non-equilibrium segregation? Well, I would say it is non-equilibrium segregation, but <laughs> I, I don't have a proper relationship between that. But is the thing that we observe is not all the elements uh, equally sensitive to those segregation, uh, especially titanium is more sensitive to segregate uh, in the boundaries than the other elements under elastic stress. Hmm. Is it that you're looking at a system that's multi-site, multi-solute, and mm -hmm. you've got site competition, and you may be actually seeing scatter in the behavior from the unstressed and stress that you're tipping the balance of yeah. Which elements get there first and stop the other ones getting there? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Carlos. That's uh, very thank nice. Mm -hmm. um, just to refer to Abe's comment and also Igor's comment, mm -hmm. uh, the oxide particles have another function as well, yes. don't they? Yes. They are That's for right. the fusion reactor program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, can you explain that other function with oh. the bubbles? Oh, well, the, mm, yes, you're right. But the, um, the function that with the bubbles is how they are trapping the, uh, well, the transmutation elements during the, the nuclear reactor function. So are trapping elements like uh, hydrogen, phosphor, that can, uh, hi uh, helium, and they, uh, stabilize, uh, they are reducing the damage for irradiation in the material. Yes, but this is a, st a strong competition with the NFA alloys. Actually, the NFA, the problems in, during manufacturing uh, on the bad properties of toughness with the uh, ODS alloys uh, doesn't appear in the NFA alloys. I mean, the, uh, the 
um, the nano feature alloys, which are um, basically the same as a composition than the ODS, but you are not introducing the oxides by itself. So uh, they have uh, very good properties in terms of low temperature, I mean toughness and strength. <laughs> Good properties because the stability of the yttrium aluminium, ox uh, yttrium titanium oxides at high temperatures, I mean by high temperatures, are between 800 and 900 degrees C in terms of irradiation. So those uh, alloys are more uh, promising than the original, but of course all the background we have is with ODS, especially other grades of chromium like Eurofer and all other, other grades, yes. So thank you. I think you we have a... A couple of questions from the oh. internet. Uh, one question from uh, AK Steel Research. Um, uh -huh. Do you have a feel of, for any difference in band ductility effect from alpha prime versus beta prime precipitate? In bendability? Uh, uh, band ductility. Ductility. Uh, I'm not oh. sure what is band ductility. Ductility in bending. Uh, yeah, it's bending test. Okay. We didn't test. We didn't test in, in this. Mm. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Any other questions? Mm. All right, well, um, let's thank our last speaker then. Thank you, thank Carlos. You. Um, <laughs> I want to say another thank you to all of the speakers who've presented this morning and to the audience for some really fruitful discussions. We've gone from you know, manufacturing steel on a bulk scale all the way down to the quantum mechanics of a hydrogen atom. So we've covered all of those scales in between, which I think is wonderfully adventurous. Um, and I personally am particularly excited to discover that I can build my own steel manufacturing plant using components bought off eBay. So I hope that all inspires you to go out and do your own back garden projects. But now we'll break for lunch and uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see everyone again in the afternoon.